You're watching Tag TV. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Next slides carry out violent attacks in India out of frustration. Indian security forces neutralize seven terrorists in Kashmir. And Park Anti-Terrorism Court jails Hafiz Saeed's five aides in terror financing case. Nexalism has always been one of the biggest security challenges in India. However, over the past few years, Nexalites have suffered a huge loss as Indian security forces are giving them a strong fight in their den. Cornered and losing territory fast, these Maoists are now lashing out in fury and frustration. The recent dastardly attack on Indian security personnel in Chhattisgarh is a sign of their desperation. We take a look. These brave hearts in uniform are paying tributes to courageous security personnel martyred in the Sukma Bijapur border region of Chhattisgarh. In one of the deadliest Maoist ambushes ever in Bastar Division, at least 22 security personnel were killed and 33 injured. Security forces were conducting an operation against the left wing insurgent group when one of the teams came under attack. The ensuing battle included bullets, grenades and rocket launchers from both sides. Many Maoists are also believed to have died in the fierce gun battle. It was just another well-planned and ruthlessly executed attack in a long line of similar attacks by the frustrated ultras in the Maoist infested regions of central India. <laughs> और उनके परिवारजनों को और देश को इतना विश्वास दिलाना चाहता हूं कि जवानों ने अपना खून जो देश के लिए बहाया है वो व्यर्थ नहीं जाएगा हमारी लड़ाई और मजबूती के साथ और मक्कमता के साथ और तीव्रता के साथ इन नक्सलियों के खिलाफ चालू रहेगी और हम इसको परिणाम तक ले जाएंगे अ सर्च ऑन द इंटरनेट शोस दैट हंड्रेड्स ऑफ सिक्योरिटी पर्सनल फ्रॉम वेरियस कैडर्स हैव बीन किल्ड इन सच अटैक्स especially in the past two decades by well-armed Maoist rebels in the region. There is a list of Naxal attacks that shook the nation over the last few years. Earlier this year on March 4, three Jawans of the Jharkhand Jaguar lost their lives in an improvised explosive device blast planted by Naxals in the West Singhbhum district of the state. In March 2020, 17 security personnel of District Reserve Guard and the special task force lost their lives in the encounter with Naxals in Chhattisgarh, Sukma. In 2019, four security personnel were killed after Naxals attacked a PCR van carrying a police party in the Latihar district of Jharkhand in November. The same year in May, 15 police personnel and a driver lost their lives in a landmine blast triggered by the Naxals in Maharashtra's Garchiroli. And the list just goes on. Often the pattern of Maoist ambushes is similar to those of the past. The modus operandi of Maoists in the latest encounter appears to be the same as that employed in the 2017 Burkapal attack or the 2010 Dantewara attack. In such kinds of attacks, the armed guerrillas isolate and attack a party of soldiers returning from an area domination exercise. <laughs> ग्राउंड्स में जो फील्ड ऑफिसर्स हैं उनको ही अपना एक तरीका निकालना पड़ता है वो तरीका क्या होता है कि कुछ लोकल सोर्सेस से अपने इनपुट्स लेने वाले तैयार किए जाते हैं उनको कुछ पैसा देना पड़ता है लेकिन वो जो सोर्सेस की इतनी बड़ी जान का खतरा होता है जैसे ही नक्सलाइट्स को मालूम चल जाएगा कि ये CRPF के सोर्स 
तो तुरंत उसको मार दिया जाएगा उनके पास कोई वहाँ कोई वकालत नहीं होती है कोई जजमेंट उनका सिंपल जजमेंट में आके वो मार दें तो आदमी को अपनी जान का खतरा है तो पहली बात तो सोर्स पकड़ना बहुत बड़ी बात है अकॉर्डिंग टू आर्म्ड कॉन्फ्लिक्ट लोकेशन एंड इवेंट डेटा प्रोजेक्ट एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्पेशलाइज इन डिस एग्रीगेटेड कॉन्फ्लिक्ट डेटा कलेक्शन देर वॉज अ ट्वेंटी परसेंट डिक्रीज इन ऑर्गेनाइज पोलिटिकल वायलेंस इवेंट्स इन्वॉल्विंग नक्सल माविस्ट इंसर्जेंस इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी कंपेयर टू ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन डेटा फ्रॉम अदर सोर्सेज इंक्लूडिंग मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ होम अफेयर्स ऑल्सो शो अ डिक्लाइनिंग ट्रेंड इन नक्सल रिलेटेड वायलेंस इन द लास्ट फ्यू ईयर्स डिस्पाइट सच इम्प्रूवमेंट The Maoist threat still persists in several hot spots across the country. The Bastar division in Chhattisgarh is the core of the residual Maoist problem not only in the state but in the entire so-called Red Corridor region. It comprises seven densely forested districts: Bastar, Bijapur, Dantewada, Kanker, Kondagaon, Narayanpur, and Sukma, sprawling across 40,000 square kilometers in the southernmost region of the state. Over the years, most states affected by left-wing extremism have largely tackled the Maoist problem, with security forces playing a key role. But in Chhattisgarh, various factors make it a challenge. So there are three aspects to controlling Naxalism or any form of uh, terrorism in that sense. The first, of course, is security operations. Uh, the second is finances, as well as local development to prevent the recruitment pool. uh the third is the intellectual normalization uh network that happens with all terror uh, organizations and the naxals are no exception to it so while the government has been very good with uh you know curbing the finances of naxals and with security operations uh, uh the problem is uh, in the third category which is the intellectual normalization of uh, uh naxalism and that needs to be dealt with uh, the government needs to do more on that naxalism is losing ground in india but remains a challenge for security forces a new approach is required by security forces to prevent such violent attacks which are the outcome of maoist distress there is an urgent need to reexamine the current strategies towards this challenge While Pakistan is trying hard to revive violence in Kashmir, India is committed to fight all their tricks to stop its western neighbor from inciting terror in the valley. The Indian security forces, despite suffering losses, managed to foil all its devious agendas. Once again, continuing with the spate of encounters that have taken place recently in the valley, Indian security forces eliminated seven terrorists hiding in the Shopia and Pulwama districts of Kashmir. A counter-terrorism offensive aimed at wiping out Pakbak terrorists from Jammu and Kashmir has gained fresh momentum with the killing of as many as seven terrorists in just two days, including Imtiaz Shah, the top commander of Al Qaeda-inspired terror outfit Ansar Ghazwatul Hind. that has been coordinating with Pakistan based Jaish-e Mohammed in Jammu and Kashmir. The encounter had started after a joint team of Jammu and Kashmir police and security forces launched a search operation on the basis of specific information about the presence of terrorists in Shopia and Pulwama districts. As Kashmir is heading towards more peace and prosperity, Pakistan being envious of this development is busy hatching wily plots to incite terrorism in the valley but the alert indian security forces are foiling all its attempts of rejuvenating terror and violence in the region the recent past there been growing incidents of terrorist attacks on security forces particularly on the nakas in shopia kulgam pulwama and sopor each one of these have led led to encounters thereafter and in each and every case without any losses to the security forces we been able to eliminate the terrorists in the last 24 hours in shopia we killed five terrorists and in tral we killed another two terrorists this clearly indicates that the terrorists are no match whatsoever to the security forces our intelligence sharing our intelligence gathering and our mutual cooperation and trust is absolutely outstanding and they are totally on the back foot 
unable to disrupt peace in Kashmir Valley through its nefarious designs of sending terrorists and weapons, Pakistan is now hatching a conspiracy to smuggle drugs into Indian territory. In a recent development, security forces in Kupwara district of Union Territory busted a Pakistan-sponsored narco-terror module operating in Jammu and Kashmir and arrested one terrorist associate. A total of 9 kg heroin was recovered from his possession. The module was in touch with Pakistan-based terror handlers and it was using the drug money to fund terror-related activities in the valley. You see, you must understand, the terrorist activities which involve ammunition, weapons, etc. are supported by finance and the finance is generated by the drug smuggling. And this drug smuggling is a very old phenomena. There are a lot of Pakistani armed forces officers are involved. A lot of money is being exchanged. The money is being given to their foreign suppliers from wherever they are getting the supply into European countries, etc. So this is a very big chain. The drug and the uh, arms are interrelated. And that is why the uh, narcotic cells are there, narcotic elements are also there, directly related to terrorism. Meanwhile, several intelligence reports suggest that park backed terror organizations are now recruiting women over ground workers to attack security forces in order to protect terrorists from the Indian security agencies. Women are generally considered as innocent, defenseless, fragile and non-violent. Hence, terror groups use them for Reiki of locations and delivery of weapons and other incriminating materials. Kashmir police have so far arrested close to half a dozen women in such cases. Last week, two women were arrested who were involved in the Naugam attack. Terror groups are also using women to motivate youngsters in the valley to pick up the gun against India. It has been seen that uh, uh, the, through honey trap, through, you know, creating love jihad sort of scene, whatever the scenes may be, they, the women find it very easy to make contacts, befriend people, supply arms, and they are a very good conduit, and that is what they are doing. Security forces in Kashmir Valley have strengthened their intel network and improved coordination. Their concerted efforts have tilted the scales in their favor. Although Pakistan has been trying its best to undo this success and is attempting to rewrite the story of terrorism in the valley, the vigilant security forces in India will never let it happen. In today's globalized world, no country is immune to the threat of terrorism. India, as a victim of terrorism, is very much aware of this evolving phenomenon with terrorist organizations continuously changing their modus operandi. To counter this global threat, on one hand, India is making huge contribution to UN Counterterrorism Fund and on the other hand, New Delhi is raising strong voice against terror-related activities on various global platforms. We have a report. India continues its strong and focused commitment to help member states build capacity to prevent and counter terrorism. India's permanent representative to UN tweeted this while declaring that India has till date contributed over 1 million US dollar to the UN Counter-Terrorism Fund. Along with such huge monetary contribution in the fight against terrorism, New Delhi is always very vocal about this global threat. Recently, India at the United Nations Security Council expressed concerns over the upsurge of violence in Mali and reiterated the need for more robust support from the Council. While strongly condemning the attack, we express our solidarity with the government and the people of Chad, whose four peacekeepers lost their lives, and we also wish speedy recovery of those injured. The security situation in Mali, particularly in the central and northern Mali, remains a matter of concern. In the last three months, MINUSMA has lost 10 peacekeepers to attacks by terrorist groups in Mali. The latest attack on MINUSMA camp reflects the gravity of the situation. The eighth term as a non-permanent member of the UN Security Council was begun by India in the beginning of this year with the stated objective of raising its voice against terrorism. 
Since then, New Delhi has been speaking for the developing world and bringing human-centric inclusive solutions to matters of peace and global security. Recently, India urged the UN Security Council to remain cognizant of the dangers of the weapons of mass destruction falling into the hands of terrorist groups. Being a responsible member of the UNSC, New Delhi has also raised concerns over increasing violence in Africa's terrorist hotspots. Terrorist groups such as Jama al Nusrat ul Islam wal Muslimin and the Islamic State in Greater Sahara are growing in strength, evident from the increasing number of attacks. Given the spread of terrorist groups in the Sahel region, we reiterate the need for more robust support from the Council and from the international community to the joint force of the Group of Five for the Sahel. India, as a leading contributor to UN peacekeeping operations, has extended assistance towards international demining and rehabilitation efforts. Recently, New Delhi expressed support for the UN's mine action efforts and called for joint action against use of landmines, IEDs, by terrorists. It is a matter of deep concern that terrorist groups such as Daesh, Hayat Tahrir al-Sham and al-Nusra Front have resorted to landmines and IEDs as low-cost and effective option to spread terror and threaten innocent civilians. We are also witnessing a similar trend in Mali, where peacekeepers have been targeted by IEDs. Such usage has only increased. We need to strongly condemn and take effective action to combat this trend. India is going to chair the Counter-Terrorism Committee in 2022, which coincides with the 75th anniversary of India's independence. The chairing of this committee has a special resonance for India, which has not only been in the forefront of fighting terrorism, especially cross-border terrorism, but has also been one of the biggest victims. For India, there is a long way to go as the international effort against terrorism is a key priority of New Delhi in the United Nations. Under immense pressure from the international community, Pakistan Anti-Terrorism Court indicted five close aides of Hafiz Saeed on terror financing charges this week, including Saeed's brother. The move came after two months of FATF's decision to keep Pakistan on its grey list, with the country's status set to be reviewed next at an extraordinary plenary session in June 2021. A Pakistani anti-terrorism court has sentenced five leaders and close aides of Mumbai attack mastermind Hafiz Saeed's Jamaat Dawa to nine years of imprisonment each in a terror financing case. The court also ordered a six-month jail term to Saeed's brother-in-law, Hafiz Abdul Rahman Maki, in the same case. They had been collecting funds and unlawfully financing the proscribed organization lashkar e -Taiba. The court has also ordered confiscation of assets made from funds collected through terrorism financing. Pakistan, for decades, has been sponsoring and aiding terror organizations on its soil, which are responsible for a large number of terrorist attacks in the entire world, especially India. However, with the huge pressure from the international community building up, Pakistan has been compelled to take actions against these terrorists. This action of the authorities is only because Pakistan has been retained in the FATF grey list and they are worried that in case they don't show action against all these terrorists because these are terrorists of the prescribed outfits and till such time they are not behind bars, Pakistan is not going to be let off the hook of the grey list of FATF. 41 FIRs have been registered against the JUD leaders in terror financing cases and so far 37 of them have been decided. LET founder Hafiz Saeed, who was arrested in 2019, has been sentenced for a collective imprisonment of 36 years on terror finance charges in five cases so far. However, it is widely known that PM Imran Khan's government provides special treatment to the UN-designated terrorist. He has unbridled access to almost everywhere in Pakistan. 
He carries rallies, holds meetings, and even gets a VIP cover while appearing in a court of law. Moreover, despite being lodged in Lahore jail, he's able to run his so-called charitable trusts and madarsas because of his tall stature in Islamabad. Pakistan has even defended his prosecution in the 2611 case. And his imprisonment is just a euphemism for protection and nurturing his safe heavens. He is the legitimate, illegitimate child of ISI and he is the person through whom Pakistan ensures to spread militancy in other parts of the world and of course in the Indian state. Not only this, not only this, Hafiz Sayyid is the person who is openly ranting and raving against India and threatening India that they are going to ensure that India is going to be removed from the face of earth. All this is happening and Pakistan turns a blind eye to it because the reason being that they cannot take any action against him because if Hafiz Saeed is arrested or if like he is brought to India and put behind bars, he will be giving all the secrets of Pakistan, how Pakistan is training the militants, how the terror camps are running, how the young children are recruited into militancy from poor families and then converted into suicide bombers to spread militancy all over the world. The drama of convicting these terrorists is barely a subject of surprise because Pakistan, from a very long time, is known for initiating bogus counter-terrorism operations. No wonder that Punjab State's Counter-Terrorism Department suddenly woke up to the presence of Zakir Rahman Lakhvi, lashkar e taiba Operations Commander, who was roaming around freely and ordered his arrest in the beginning of 2021 just a month before the Financial Action Task Force decision on Pakistan's greater status. However, it failed to convince the FATF, the Global Money Laundering and Terrorist Financing Watchdog. And later, in January 2021, an arrest warrant against the UN-designated global terrorist and Jaish-e Mohammed's chief, Masood Azhar, was also issued in a terror financing case. But no arrest has been made so far. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Shreya Savajay signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.